I want to start a new genre of music. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, it's called gay pop. No one has made this dramatic of a change yet. No one has made, in my generation, this extreme of a switch. And I am the first in the generation. It is very scary, but someone's got to do it. Dream guest on my podcast? Oh, my gosh. I mean, honestly, let's spice things up. One of my exes. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so a few weeks ago, I made a video on this channel called How the Internet Fell Out of Love with Jojo Siwa, and that video was part of a long-running series that I do monthly on this channel, where I sort of chronicle and profile how a celebrity is being perceived by the internet over a certain amount of time. Little did I know that a couple days after making that video, Jojo would become like the most talked about topic across pretty much all social media platforms. You might remember that at the point I left off in my original video about Jojo, she was just teasing this rebrand of hers on Instagram, sort of talking about and alluding to how she's going to go into like a more mature direction. And this was like before we even heard any of her new single or before we saw any of the choreography that's been making the rounds on TikTok. For whatever reason, people have been so fixated on and obsessed with this rebrand and how it's going and why it's failing and obviously I'm going to kind of compile all of that information here so you guys can understand where we are at in the story currently as of recording this video. Her newest single and corresponding visuals have been officially released and so this new Jojo era is in full swing and I will catch you up on how we got to this point but I kind of want to unpack why people are so fixated with it and I guess I want to talk about how it's so easy to point out what is going wrong with this from a marketing or consumer marketing perspective but I feel like also the the underlying root of the problem that nobody's really talking about is that Jojo is very young still, she's only 20 years old, and Jojo has never actually lived in reality. Wake up to all these emails of, did you see the video? Did you see the video? And here it is a video of the ALDC girls making fun of Jojo while they're in Ireland. <laughs> But it was they innocent. They never said anything that they hadn't already said to Jojo to her face. Kara is one of the worst moms I know. It doesn't surprise me at all that she's standing by what Kalani said. I mean, when we first came to the ALDC, Kira was making fun of Jojo. And oh, I got these for free, and I got these for free, and I got these for free. They stated a fact. Now, how did they say it, Kira? Yeah. Did they say it like you said it when no. you were mimicking Jojo? So they learned it from you. I get this for free and this for free. They were making fun of her. They said it they the were way making she fun said of her. It. I don't oh, think I they made fun of Jojo. I think they were stating facts. They were they were in the moment. They were getting the crowd. So you're to... just gonna defend your kids no yes, matter what. I, no, Even if they do nope, something wrong, you're nope, just gonna it, fight nope, tooth and nail for it. So, like I said in my last video, and as that clip illustrates, pretty much all of JoJo's entire adolescent life has been a constant humiliation ritual. So does she feel any capacity of embarrassment or shame or cringe for whatever she's doing right now? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and guess no, because she grew up being bullied, like it's not any different for her. You know, she's getting bullied relentlessly right now, but she's still getting the bag, which is all her mother sort of trained her to do at the end of the day. But people have remarked, you know, that it seems really cringe, it seems very immature and adolescent, and why is a 20 year old acting like this? And it's because her growth is literally stunted. It was stunted by Dance Moms. Dance Moms is like the closest we've gotten to a modern day Stanford prison experiment. If you watch any episode of the show, especially in the later seasons, it's literally just producers instigating the most scripted conflicts, constantly aggravating everyone and playing mind games with them, making every minor drama out to be the most high stakes situation ever, deluding these girls into thinking that their, you know, performance at a made up stage dance competition is going to like make them famous. And for the majority of these girls, that wasn't really the case outside of, you know, they have a couple hundred thousand Instagram followers and they get invited to movie premieres occasionally. But the way they would make all these scenarios, this sort of high stakes, larger than life things that they would constantly have the girls going on these auditions for commercials and movies and music videos. And the music videos would always be some like low rent bullshit produced by the production company that makes Dance Moms. And you know, at the end of the day, most of them are little girls. So it would always be like, okay, you're all competing for a role in a music video with Maddie B. Like some stupid knockoff Lisa Frank Disney channel star bullshit. And basically Jojo and her mom turned that into an actual successful brand. 
And that's the only success that they've ever known. They don't know success in like the traditional, you know, Hollywood sense. That's why when Jojo says that she wants to have her Miley Cyrus bangers era, she really thinks that this is the equivalent of her Miley Cyrus bangers era. Because they've only ever known pop culture relevance and success through this cheesy brand that they've curated for little girls. So of course it's not going to work with an adult edge because there's no sex appeal. It still has this like glittery nonsense vibe to it. The song doesn't even have cursing in it and we'll get into the actual song in a sec, but it just, it, the worst word in it is bitch. That's, that's not Miley Cyrus bangers. This is a very different thing that we're going for here. So I think it's safe to say at this point that Jojo and her mother operate on a very different plane of reality than we do. They understand the internet, they understand the culture of viral moments, they understand how to market to little girls. But to me, it's very clear why Jojo's attempt at being edgy is, you know, starting to fall flat. Because if she's now trying to pander to teenagers and up, this is not at all what that demographic is into. So now that you understand the origins of this whole rebrand idea, I want to talk about some of the more specific missteps that she's made along the way. But before we get to that, I did want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Care Of. Care Of is a health and wellness company that ships high quality personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every single month. And Care Of has honestly become a staple part of my morning routine. To get started, all you do is take a short, simple online quiz about your lifestyle, your health goals, maybe things you want to improve, and Care Of will give you doctor-backed recommendations. They come in these cute little personalized packs and I take mine every single morning before I leave for work. And they've really made a world of difference in my day-to-day -day function. I'm super busy this time of year and I'm always on the go and I feel like in situations like that, I don't prioritize my health as much as I should through things like the foods that I'm eating. And the daily addition of these vitamin packs makes me feel like I'm in a little bit more control and they make me feel more happy and proactive about my health. I also have a separate bottle of these little digestive enzyme pills that I take with my meals and it's like second nature to me now. It's so convenient. I take them every day. To get started, you can head on over to TakeCareOf.com and use my code says 50 for 50% off of your first month subscription. That is TakeCareOf.com. Use my code says 50 for 50% off of your first month subscription. And thank you so much again to our friends at Care Of for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so as you may have guessed, for the last few weeks, Jojo Siwa has been promoting her newest single, Karma, all over social media. And unfortunately, uh, the copyright gods are really strict with this one, so I cannot play any of Karma for you, but if you look the song up on TikTok, you will see a billion videos of what I'm talking about here. The song is not great. It's very much a standard pop track, I guess. People have pointed out that it sounds like it's from Disney's Descendants, and I think somebody actually found out that somebody who worked on Descendants wrote the song. And obviously it's edgier in comparison to what she was doing with her toddler music, but it doesn't really go that far. You know, it uses the word bitch in the chorus, karma's a bitch or whatever. But there's also the lyric, I would have never effed around, and she specifically sings effed, not fucked around, effed around. Additionally, the beginning verse of the song goes, I was a bad girl, I did some bad things. It's all very on the nose, very derivative. And it's like, she could say she's entering a new era musically all she wants, I guess, but at the same time, I feel like the only people who would actually enjoy this music are like, 10 year olds, maybe, maybe. And again, it just speaks to the fact that Jojo is so emotionally stunted from, you know, her experience in the world so far that she's completely out of touch with what people in the demographic she's trying to appeal to actually like. And it's not even a question of actual musical talent. Jojo can't sing, and I feel like she'd probably be the first to tell you that, but also look at somebody like Tate McRae, who also can't sing and is a really phenomenal dancer, but just has more of a well put together package and clearly has that crossover appeal between internet culture and TikTok and what it means to have like a mainstream pop star sex appeal. One of the other debates about karma happening right now is about the choreography. There's a million videos of Jojo doing this choreography that's in the music video and she's doing it in the studio, she's going full out, she's doing it with other people. And people have been going back and forth about whether the choreo for this song is actually bad or if it's just that Jojo performs it badly. From what I understand, because I follow a lot of dancers on TikTok who have talked about this, it seems like there's no fluidity to her movements. She just sort of punches every, every single thing that she does really loudly and really intensely and so it doesn't even really look like individual steps or like a choreography sequence. It just looks like she's flailing around aimlessly and people have sort of picked up on that fact and have been parodying it on TikTok through their own sort of dance sequences and whatever. And that makes sense to me because I feel like that's always just sort of been the kind of dancer that Jojo is. She's very intense, she uses her personality and her face. 
but paired with something like this, it doesn't translate super well. So, you know, the little snippet she was teasing with the choreography and the actual song on TikTok were not boding well for her. And things kind of went from bad to worse when she debuted the sort of visual aesthetic that she's going for here, showing up to the iHeartRadio Music Awards in this getup, which is also what she's wearing in the music video for Karma. And I think what happened here is in an attempt to provide a really stark visual contrast to the glitter and the rainbows of her past, she sort of looped back around to that same aesthetic, just, you know, black instead of rainbow colors. There is something so juvenile to me about this aesthetic. It looks like it's supposed to be an imitation of punk rock, but like commercialized punk rock. It reads to me like a dance costume. And outside of the aesthetic influences, the costume itself is just a little weird and jarring to look at. Especially what's going on from like the neck up with, you know, that kiss style eye makeup and this weird little braid hanging down from her chin to her chest. It's super bizarre. So yeah, clearly people are very put off by this sort of mismatched visual aesthetic. The song, the choreo, you know, what it means to actually have a rebrand and how it's conflicting with what she's presenting. But I think what is really driving the nail in the coffin here is how Jojo is acting. And this once again connects back to the fact that she lives in her own world. You know, this is the behavior of somebody who spent like a decade of her life having Abby Lee Miller in her ear, either bullying her or gassing her up, depending on the day. I played a couple of the clips in the beginning of this video, but she's talking in this deep raspy voice that's not really how her voice sounds. She's talking very confidently about how she's inventing a new genre called gay pop and how, you know, no other pop star of her generation has made this dramatic of an aesthetic switch. She recently got caught by the pop Razzi, I guess, going to an adult store and coming out with a penis plushie. And all of this has had people jumping to the natural inclination to believe that she's trolling. They're like, oh, she's trolling. There's no way she's taking herself this seriously. This era is all a joke. She's in on it. She's doing these purposefully outlandish things to get people to talk about her. And no, I don't think so. I think this rebrand started out completely seriously. And you know how I know that? Because if she really was trolling with all of this, she would keep the bit going for as long as possible. She would double down on every single thing that she's doing. But she didn't. She went on a podcast to talk about how this was trolling. And that's my dead giveaway that she's now doing damage control. Um, but with that particular dance move, it started because I was fucking around in the studio videoing the dance and I was like I want to see what happens if I do it like overly full out what it looks like because that shit would sometimes be really good on TikTok so I did it as the choreography and karma and that's that first one that I posted where it like is like what the fuck is she doing and I sent it to my mom and I was like dude look at this I was like something about this is crack ingested and you have to watch it twice <laughs> and I was like I don't know what I did and she said it's the extra reverb when I land it when I land the step and I was like I just got to chuck it up. I was like, I know I'm going down in flames for this one because I look crazy, but like this, this. So I chucked it up and what do you know? It goes nuts. And so then that kind of came a thing. You know what I mean? I kind of had to like keep, keep doing it like that. And so since that interview, people have been like, oh, Jojo trolled us all. She's a marketing genius. She's all in on the joke. It's all 10 levels of irony. And I just have a hard time believing that. I really do. Maybe she is 10 steps ahead of everyone else. Maybe she understands viral TikTok marketing more than anybody else ever will. But I just have such a hard time believing that she you know, played 3D chess with this choreography for her music video. And by the way, she says in this interview that it doesn't look the same in the music video and in the music video, it's like more tame. No, it looks the same. She's doing it the same way. I feel like she didn't have the complete genuine reception to this that she wanted. And now she's coming at it from like the, you know, everything is buried under seven layers of irony perspective. But no, I think everything about this rebrand was genuine on Jojo's part and it's just not being received the way she thought it would be because she has such a disconnect to what people her age and older are actually into. And I know I'm gonna get a couple of comments saying that I'm being harsh on JoJo and I really don't think I am because if you didn't see my last video, I feel like all of this is also a distraction from the fact that there was a really, you know, unsavory report that came out about her and her mother about how they both allegedly verbally abused little girls in a pop group that they founded. It also does not help that two of the biggest names at Jojo Siwa's Karma release party included Colleen Ballinger and James Charles. Like I said in my last video about Jojo, there's parts of me that do feel bad for her because she didn't really have much choice about what her life was going to turn out like. And she is what she is in part due to the mistakes of the adults around her. But Jojo is growing up. She's changing. And if this is the path forward for her, then so be it. Because if nothing else, we're getting some truly golden content on TikTok right now. But Jojo, I need to warn 
This man is going to sue you. He's going to try to sue you. He tried to trademark the devil horns, all right? Gene is going to get you. Gene is going to get you. You need to stop. Thank you all so much for watching. A reminder to follow me on my new Twitter account because my old Twitter account got suspended. Please follow me back. I miss all of my mutuals dearly. Thanks so much.